Hi everyone, I'm Russ. I'm Mark. And this is a Spirited Endeavor. Prime in the Pump Edition. Yes. All right, old favorite tonight. Yeah, it's nice to go back to this one. This I, was kind of the beginning for you. It really was. I mean, this was kind of the whiskey that sort of unlocked whiskey for me. Yeah. Um, and uh, what's interesting, though, is we've not done a Prime in the Pump Edition on this yeah, one. Yeah, it's funny. You know, the number of times that we've mentioned this one and we've had this one, I just would have assumed that we did a Prime in the Pump, but going back through our records, it's like we never did it. So this is long overdue. Yeah, absolutely. Now we, you know, we were pretty, lo we were grooving really hard on Highland Park there yes. for a while. Yeah. And we've tried a lot of Highland Parks. Yes, we have. Yes. Um, the cast strength, however, kind of just took all of them put it, and just kind of tipped them sideways. Yeah. Because that is just such a phenomenal whiskey. They did a great job with that one. But the uh, the HP twelve is um, is very accessible. Mm -hmm. It's um, you know it's it's um, uh, not very pricey. You know it's yeah. and I think it's worth every penny that you pay for it. And generally, you can find them pretty easily. Yes, they're they're all over the place, yeah. and uh, you can you can pretty much pick these things up on any street corner. And the bottles are gorgeous. gorgeous. I mean, if you just want something on the shelf to look pretty. That's kind of a good one to go with. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the, the I mean, the, the glass is embossed and raised, mm -hmm. and it's got you know the um, uh, Viking symbols, you know, symbols on it and artwork, and uh, it's been a it's it's a beautiful bottle. Now it's you know it's an interesting point though because that kind of bottle there's a cost associated with that. Mm -hmm. With volume, obviously, that cost has an impact on profits and what generally you would expect to pay. You know, you can. You buy something for 30 bucks and it's got an ornate bottle, you have a pretty good idea that what's in that bottle is not going to be fantastic. This is kind of the exception of the rule because you get a really nice looking bottle, the whiskey's damn tasty, and yet the price is really reasonable on these. Yeah, that is the truth too. And, you know, they don't, they don't skip. I mean, this is their base model and it has yeah. just as much love in this as the 18 or the 21 or the 25, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever bottles are out there. Um, they just uh, they just released a brand new one, um, a 15 mm. year that's actually in a um, a white ceramic bottle. Ooh. Yeah. So um, that looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. Cool. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah, we're gonna have to maybe check that one out. Yeah, definitely have to learn more about it. Um, I would have to agree with you though. The cask strength kind of changed. I mean, I had Highland Park up there to begin with, but that cast strength just kind of bumped them up a bit, bit yeah, further, really. to be honest. Yeah, it kind of makes me wish that they would do that with more of their selection. Yeah, I'm with you but on that. You know what? We're not going to grape. Yeah, it's. I'm kind of curious to go back to this one, to be honest. It's been a little bit. This has. Now, this is our third bottle yeah. of this. So, clearly, it's it's been popular. It's just been a minute since I've had it. Yeah. It's like revisiting an old friend. It really is. So now, yeah, now these are chill filter. They mm -hmm. are color uh, color added. I would think so. Yeah, I don't think it mentions anything about it, but I think they they have a tendency of doing that. And it's forty three percent ABV. Yeah. So I mean, it's not you know, it's not proof down to forty, but it's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, still it has decent oils to it. It's uh, oh yeah, and that that nose is just amazing. Yep, very yeah. distinctive. And it's kind of a through line with a lot of Highland Parks. You know, you really get yeah. that you know that heathery peat you know from the Orkney Island. Um, it's a. Uh, um, you know, it's it's the northernmost distillery in Scotland. You know that that weather is up there is a little crazy. It kind of it kind of reflects into the uh, into the whiskey. Yeah. Now the way I like to look at the Highland Park Twelve is when we just got into this. One of the first uh, Island whiskeys we tried was Bowmore Twelve. Yes. Um, and Bowmore Twelve was interesting for somebody that had never done peat or smoke or any of, any of that. I think this is a step beyond that. I do too. Um, I think if you were just getting into peated whiskeys, Belmore 12 would be a good first step. This would be the next rung up that ladder. Um, there's enough peat to where you're going to get it on the nose, some interesting aromas, that sort of thing, but it's not It's not a huge slap in the face. Yeah. It's, it's a truth. Now, there is a, there's a little bit of peat. There's a little bit of smoke to this one, as Russ said, um, and uh, it presents really nice. You know, this is... Mm. Um, yeah, this is you know where if you want to take somebody on a you know smoky journey, you know, and they're they're not used to that kind of thing. This is maybe one to start them off with because it's going to give you just a little bit. 
actually probably mm -hmm. similar to like the Johnny Walker Black. Oh, absolutely. You know, it has that same type of level of peat and smoke to it. Yeah, and just a little bit there, but and it's not, it's not like an, uh, your typical Isla. It's not real briny or anything like that. It's not like a mermaid fart. Um, it's more subtle than that. So again, really good entry point. Now I think they use this in the uh, the Johnny Walker. I think you're right. Um, the green label. The green this label. was one of the ingredients in the green label was Highland Park. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, and again, I love this. Yeah, the nose briny. is so unique. On yeah, this a little one. briny. It's uh, it's really great. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That doesn't get dull. There's a nice sweetness that goes with that too. Uh, just enough, spi en enough spice in there to be interesting, mm -hmm. uh, not overwhelming. Um, there's no real sharp edges to any in this whiskey in any regard. Um, the, the the smoke and the peat presents really nicely. It's just subtle in the background. It's not a major player in there. Yeah. But that sweetness really mm. comes through. It's got a kind of a creme brulee um, yep. sweetness to it. Agreed. Um, not not overly vanilla in this one. No, I would agree with that. Um, the smoke is not that damp campfire. Mm. It's a little more, it trends more towards ashy without being like licking an ashtray, um, like some of the other whiskeys we've done. Yeah, this is definitely a step above the Beaumore 12. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's a nice oakiness to this, a maltiness yeah. for sure, um, that really kind of comes through and comes to play. Hmm. And it took the minute, it took the oak a minute to kind of kick in for me personally. Um, I had all the other flavors, but the oak really didn't present until maybe the, the finish on it. And then it just kind of washes over. It was really nice. Yeah. I'm like, I want to spit out an acorn now. <laughs> Video or it didn't happen. <laughs> mm. No, that's a, that's just a solid all around mm -hmm. whiskey. It's a it's an easy sipper. It's one that is there's enough complexity in there to keep yeah. it interesting. I agree, and that's the thing I keep going back to. You know, we've recently we were talking. You get lower proof levels or lower ABV levels, and they tend to kind of diminish with as you go through them. Mm -hmm. Each sip you take, you get a little less and less. The nice thing about this one is there's enough going on in the bottle that yeah. Certain flavors will diminish as you keep going back to it, but there's enough other stuff present to keep it interesting and keep you going back to it. Yeah, and I find that like the uh, the the spiciness on this one is starting to build. Yeah, you know, with uh, with multiple sips on it, mm. um, it's got a beautiful finish to it. It's just sort of long, long and lingering, and just just kicks around. And yeah. it's um, you know, there's there's nothing off putting on it. It's a, like a little black tea, um, mm -hmm. but not but not tannic and bitter. Yeah, I agree. It's not getting that bitterness on the finish that I've experienced with some of the other ones, which is welcome because I'm getting the oaky nature, uh, but I'm not getting that bitter nature. Yeah, this mm. is this is still like one of my favorites. Yeah, no, this is I mean, there's this a lot to love here. It's not, you know, I think it's been replaced. Yeah. Oh, but, but yeah. there's a lot. I mean, this was still this for a long time was my benchmark whiskey, yeah. and I think it still kind of is. I can see that. I don't know if I would. We've had whiskeys that have surpassed it. I mean, we've had mm -hmm. Highland Parks that have surpassed it. The, ca the cask strength made me reevaluate everything else in their line. Um, and that's not their biggest whiskey. I mean, they've got age statement whiskeys that go well beyond that, but I still think the cask strength kind of puts everything in, in its place. Um, but there is certainly still a place for this. Um, again, it's a really good comparison point for a Bowmore or some of the other Again, not entry level, but perhaps less offensive, right. maybe, Highland yeah. whiskeys. I'm not quite sure how to put that, but um, I think this is a good entry point. Yeah, for sure. Now, you know, what's really amazing about Highland Park is, you know, we tried a lot of them. We love them mm -hmm. and everything. There's a, uh, uh, there, I recently came upon a 25-year Highland Park. Mm. It's got a little, bit of, a little bit of coin to it, and I'm, I think I'm willing to pay it. Mm-hmm. I think I'm willing to. I'm, I think I'm really willing to shell out the, the coins for that one. That's a really good point, actually. You know, we've talked about this time and time again. We're we've had some higher end whiskeys. We've had some higher end bourbons, for that matter. And, you know, you don't generally jump right into an 18 year or a 20 year or a 25 year. You start with maybe the 12 year or a 10 year or something like that, just to kind of get a feel for the distillery and what where their tastes lie. Um, 
And the thing that always kind of gets me is there's some just stories out there where they just don't put the attention to detail in their 10 or 12 year. And that makes it really tough to justify spending the money on an 18 or 20 year or something like that. Highland Park with their 12, clearly there's attention to detail here. Yeah, absolutely. And it encourages you to explore their line. Which we most Which certainly we have. have. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. Yeah, yeah. Very I mean, successfully. I think there's only one distill, uh, one distiller I have actually more bottles of than Highland Park. Yeah, and we don't want to show that on camera. Plausible deniability is <laughs> a right. thing. <laughs> there's like a whole shelf over there. Yeah. 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 Anyhow. All right. Well, what do you think on uh, on the scale? I think I I think it's a. I, I'm, I'm going to say three and a half. I almost want to give it a four, but I'm saying I, th I think time has kind of moved us past this mm -hmm. one just a little bit. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm going to go three. Um, now, by comparison, I would put Baltimore 12 at like a two, uh, maybe a one and a half. So that kind of puts that in perspective. Again, what this would have scored higher for me, but again, the cast strength version of this just kind of just killed <laughs> just. I just bitch slap At that all point, them. it's like that's what this can be. And look, there's there's a need for this. Not everybody needs to start off with something that's over fifty percent ABV, cast strength version of this. Yes. There's a need for this. Um, personally, I just think where I'm at in this whole whiskey journey, I'm going to grab the cast strength every single time. But I'm glad we started with this. Yeah, I am and too. I'm glad it led us down that path. Yeah, and uh, just to give you a little perspective, I have an 18-year Highland Park, and I put the cast strength over that. Too. Oh, yeah. And that's a non-age statement. No, and I would agree with you wholeheartedly with that. Absolutely. Really cool revisiting that, though. I know, it's, really. Is. It's been a little bit, and I forgot just how good that was. Yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this one, and uh, thank you guys for, uh, for joining us tonight. Yeah, appreciate it. Hope you had a good time. Yeah, we sure did. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Okay, bye.